Hi folks, my name is Ranger Jack Singley over here at Historic Yates Mill County Park and we're doing a video today for Taco, Take a Child Outside Week. Um, and what does that mean? Well, we're trying to encourage you to give you the skills to be able to come to the park if you've never been to a park before and have a great time. So if you work for Wake County, I wanted to put a shameless plug in for Living Great in Wake County. Yates Mill, Crowder Park, all the parks are available to you and I encourage you to come out and enjoy your wake spaces. Um, they're for your use. And we're going to go over some uh, different skills and things to know and have when you go on a hike here. Alright, so when you first get to the parking lot here at Historic Yates Mill, right on the left hand side of the parking lot is a kiosk. In a lot of parks, we have these kinds of kiosks to let you know more about the park. Um, and you can see what's going on in the park. You can see Interfaith Food Shuttle and that we're encouraging people to do a winter garden this year. I encourage if you can't make it out to the park to come and check it out. Send an email to yatesmail at wakeup.com and I can send you, Jack Singley, I can send you some information on gardening, what you can do to do a winter garden and help feed people in the in the six surrounding counties around Wake County and help people that really do need help with their food security. So, but here's a park map. The park map is a tool to make sure that you feel the most calm in the park. So even, even though our trails are in really good shape here in Wake County, we do a lot of good work to make sure that they're very clear. This map makes it easier for you to see. And inside Historic Yates Mill County Park, we have three main trails. Today we're going to go walk around on the main Nil Pond Trail. And we're going to talk about different things you can do along there to enjoy nature and have fun with your family. TV friends, let's go and look at what is in a good pack uh, for your first day hike out in the park. So when you go out in the park, just like going to school, you want to make sure that you have the things that you need for your time outside. Um, you don't necessarily need things to have a good time, but I like to be prepared. Kind of like Scouts, they encourage you to have everything that you need to have a good time and be safe with your family. So I've got a few things that allow me to enjoy nature in a special way, but also make sure that I'm safe. So um, I'm an adult, so I drink coffee a lot. I have young kids and some parents out there might have that experience as well. Make sure you have your coffee before you go out with your children. Uh, we got our park map. Park map's a really important tool. It lets us know a lot about the space we're going to explore. Moms and dads aren't the expert in everything, but parents look at us, or kids look at us to um, help them, and it, it'll alleviate your stress. And it'll mean that they'll have a better time and you'll have a better time. So maps are great. The big thing that I always bring is water. Now, water bottles can be anything, as you know, but I have a little water bottle that's a little more specialized. I used to work on, and walk a lot as a park ranger for state parks, and so I have this water bottle that I like. It's, it's a camel pack, and it'll carry a little bit more than a liter of water, and it's a fancy bag that holds it. That way I can drink water as I go. This is the locking mechanism and you can take your mask off and drink some water and put your mask back on and be safe. And then you can lock it like that to keep it from spilling on you as you walk. And it fits into your bag like that. I once had a park visitor ask me what it was. She thought, she was like, are you a scuba diver? And I was like, no, it's a water bottle. Make me smile. So, I have two young kids, 
And one of the things that I have, just in case they lose all of their uh, energy that happens with young kids, I have a couple of encouragers here in my backpack. The first is always to have a snack. Okay, so any kind of snack cracker. I mean, I like peanut butter, so that's what I bring. Um, and then I like these kinds of candies. And these are great. And they're long, they're, it's a candy that you can put in your mouth and you can suck on for a long period of time. And so it gives you a little bit of sugar throughout a long hike. So if you're feeling a little low on blood sugar, you can have that. These are, so that's a really good choice. Um, also having a little backpack to have adventuring items for your kids. Uh, so if you run into the trail and they start getting bored, you can suggest, let's look for something green or let's look for something like this. Let me give you some examples. This right here is a, a Luna moth wing that I found in the park a while ago from an old Luna moth. And it's got a little green in there. And right now, in this part of the season in fall, beginning of fall, is perfect caterpillar season. So we're gonna look for, you can look for caterpillar scat on the trail, it's a perfect time to do that. Maybe you're hiking uh, along the pond, but maybe you're at a river park or somewhere like Eno River State Park or park. Um, this is a shell from a clam. It's an Asiatic clam, which means it came from Asia a long time ago, but they live all in our, in our parks. And I got this at Harris Lake County Park. So it's pretty big. The ones here in the, in our park, Yates Mill County Park, um, they are smaller, but they'll get as big in, in China to almost six inches across, which is amazing. But when they're in salt water, but they also can survive in fresh water. And so you'll find them all around the place. Uh, raccoons love to eat them. So you can find those. It's an example of things that you can find on a hike. And then you can have your kids look for things like that. And that can be a little game. You know, you can, you can just keep the entertainment up. Because um, trying to get a kid to walk and just find enjoyment in walking is a challenge sometimes, but over time, through process and doing it, they'll learn the reasons that adults enjoy it. The stress relief, the entire looking for green and having fun. So here's another example that I carry around in my pack to talk to children that I think is really cool and you can find easily in the park. Here's two. Okay. So this is just a circular ball made of wood. There's a, a popular way of dealing with or uh, talking to children right now. It's called Reggio Emilia. And their perspective on um, teaching pedagogy is that using natural things from the natural world to engage children so that they have like a appreciation and understanding of our environment. So this is a, a wooden ball. And, but it's when we go on hikes, my children and I, uh, we use wooden things to play with so it, it has its space so um, it's special and so when we go on a hike we might roll this ball to each other on the trail and it gives us an opportunity to engage in a different way it's a really neat stick a lady gave me once um, a, a, a Native American gave me this, um, but this is a beaver stick and it's got a piece of vine growing around it. Um, and this was, this was chewed by a beaver. And here at Yates Mill, we have a lot of beaver and beaver sign. Beaver sign means is anything that shows that a beaver was there. So an example of beaver sign might be a tree that's been chewed upon girdled means that it's been chewed all the way around. This is this is the leftover of a of a beaver eating the outside bark of the tree. So it's just really beautiful. But it's also an example of an animal that's out at night or nocturnal. Um, but we're out here in the daytime where it's warm. So this is an example of seeing a beaver 
but not seeing a beaver like in the flesh. You're seeing it um, that it was here first or here before you, which is just very similar if you're spending time in the woods. So those are some cool things. Um, here is another great thing. Historic Gates Mill County Park is very popular with people who like to spot birds. And I'll be honest, Ranger Jack, birds is not my, my skill set. However, I do like birds. But a good pair of binoculars is nice. And you don't have to have an expensive pair of binoculars. Binoculars real perk of binoculars is that they help you focus on one thing. So you put them around your head and then you can look at a thing like you guys over there in TV land. Wow! Or you can go and look at a different example of something over somewhere farther from you than, than right next to you. So birds that fly off quickly they would be afraid of you if you got close. You can look at them through the binoculars and not scare them away and still observe their habitat and their, um, their interaction with it. So that's a really cool tool. If you're going somewhere that's um, with your kids and you talk about making sure they're safe in the future, which I try to do, I try to encourage my kids to, to push the boundaries of get to know me and what I can do with them young but i want to introduce new concepts so that they continue to, to make their own adventuring path past our time together so this is a compass now if you look at the compass it doesn't have any air pockets or air bubbles inside and that's really important okay so why is that ranger jack well you want to make sure that your compass doesn't have any air bubbles because that would give you the wrong coordinates. And this is a flat compass. This is made for using on a map. And lo, we have a map. Hooray. So we can take this north. You see this north, this is called a cardinal direction. You can line it up with your Now see how north says this, but the little line there on the red, you want to line that up with your map and your lines, and then that gives you coordinates. So we can see if that's north, when you enter the park, if you're going this way, you've entered the park from the west. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm taking this little line and I'm guessing that this line is kind of in line with this line. Or maybe that this line and the boardwalk is in line. Kind of like this. A little off. But that means that I can get an idea of where I'm headed in degrees. So this lesson is not on compass work, but maybe we'll do another one. If you guys request one, I'll do one on, on compass work, which is fun. Uh, so, but a compass is a really nice tool to engage with kids because it's something they can do while we're just walking, which is important. Kids need things to do. They need, they're learning the world and compasses is fun. So that's one of the things I bring on my hikes. So we've got all this stuff. When do we go, daddy and mommy? Let's go as soon as we get our pack put together. So I'm going to get my pack together and then we're going to go on a walk and talk about some techniques that we can do to have a good time on the trail. Thanks, guys. All right, folks, um, we have walked a distance down the trail from the mill. This is about the time I would guess most small kids would start getting antsy. Um, as you can tell, I'm a pretty tall person at six feet. The trail is wider than six feet here at Historic Gainesville County Park which means it's safe from the sides, from kids getting into things that you might not know anything about. So Sam and I are going to show you uh, what poison ivy looks like. And I don't want you to be afraid of coming to the park because our trails are really wide and you're safe from the plant, but it's good to know what it looks like just in case. 
So here we go. So poison ivy is known to have leaves of three. There's two that are uh, opposite of each other right here, and then there's one that comes up from there. Um, many times a, a mature leaf may be glossy. These are not as glossy, and they have a red center in the middle of the three leaves. So, um, what poison ivy does is it, it gets the plant, when injured, has an oil that will get on your pores and is absorbed very quickly and creates um, an infection um, that is very painful. And different people have different reactions to it. Some people have no reaction, some people break out with little blisters, and then some people have a more serious reaction that they have to see a doctor about. If you think you're going to be in poison ivy, you see it and you know, there's lots of different things that you can buy to help you with that, and something that you could put in your trail bag if it's a problem for you especially. Uh, one thing is called Tecnu, T-E-C-N-C. <laughs> T-E-C-H-U. Um, so Technic is a good product to check out. You put it on your skin and it keeps the oil from the plant to get into your pores. It's very nice. So, just so you know, that's what that looks like. Hi folks. So we now, um, to go over some other techniques that we do in the forest um, to have a good time on the trail, is kids love to move around. You know, they like to go and do lots of different hops. Um, you can pretend to be animals that live in the park. So for instance, like a great blue heron, that's very common here. They have big broad wings and they, they walk through the woods <laughs> like this, or actually they're in the pond and they're looking for stuff. So you'll see them do this. And maybe as we walk around the trail, the kids can try to pretend to be a blue heron from this tree to like 30 feet down the trail. You as a parent, you set that parameter and then that'll give you extra steps. If the kids are getting a little persnickety or, or whiny, you can change it up. Um, another one that I like to do with my kids, I get from Sean Higgins, State Parks are cool, go there too, is um, they like to do one where you pretend to be a squirrel. So you jump from tree to tree. So you're only safe, maybe you play tag where you're touching a tree and then you jump to another tree and they could be tagged and then you switch playing with your kids and making sure you're playing in woods will stick with them. So that makes it a lot of fun. Another cool thing is if you know anything about trees or even if you don't, there's a program that's completely free called SEEK, S-E-E-K, by iNaturalist. And it's a phone application, and you can use it to figure out all kinds of things that were once living or um, are living now. Um, I encourage you to download that app and then contact Ranger Jack and tell me all about your adventures. But if you don't have a phone, a way to introduce your kids to nature is letting them touch things. Tactile learning is really important for all people. We love to interact with our world by touching things. And COVID puts us in a circumstance where we can't. So earlier we looked in my backpack and we looked at specific things that I had taken from parks. I wanna encourage you all, we don't recommend that you take things from parks. It's against the rules. Um, I wanna say that and I wanna encourage you to touch things in the park and to engage nature. That's the way that you learn. That's the way your kids are going to love nature is by engaging in it. So this is all about that. So stick with the spirit of the law. So if you feel the bark, what does it feel like? Ask some critical questions of your kids. What do you feel? Is it bumpy? Is it smooth? Are the leaves, are they, are they glossy? Are they flat looking? The outside? Does it have a little thing that sticks out? A fun science word you can teach your kids is this little point at the end of the leaf is called a lobe, like your ear lobe. So um, different things like that are cool. Is the leaf a compound leaf? 
does it start back here as a leaf or is it a leaflet? Like this is a hickory tree and this is actually the whole leaf here. So that's, that's just a fancy tree, but um, yeah, it's really fun. And then we can look at a different tree and we can feel the bark of this tree. Is it, does it give? When you push against the tree, is it, is it, does it bend in? Is it moist? All these things. And you don't even have to know what the name of this tree is to do these things. You can just have fun with nature. So I encourage you to do that. Have fun with nature. It's a white-tailed deer. Hello, sir, ma'am. Our spots are just going away. Wow, what a jump! So this is the second bridge of the boardwalk. Hello. Hello, dear. Oh, dear. is that? So this is the second boardwalk uh, at historic Yates Mill County Park and uh, it's a great place to observe wildlife. Usually stuff a little smaller than a white-tailed deer but that was awesome. So we have some other examples of wildlife that you can see at the end of your hike around the pond. Um, here if you look right here, uh, right now is um, hummingbird season and they come to see the common jewel weed. It's that red to orange flower right there. And then if you look up a little bit, there's a coast gray tree. And it's a really small one. It's uh, pretty neat looking little critter. So they like to be on trees and apparently they also like hanging out on uh, blackberry bushes. So pretty neat little wetland here. Uh, this second bridge goes over the wetland and as you can see we just did a remodel of it. We have these awnings which make it nice whether it's spring, fall, summer, or winter outside. You can enjoy nature here at Historic Gatesville County Park. So come on out, bring your kids. I hope this stuff helps you be uh, more comfortable and confident with your ability to take your kids outside. <laughs>